Another important guiding principle for playing cello is bow amount and bow distribution, meaning, of course, how much bow we use and whereabouts in the bow we are. And there's a general principle for this, which is that on the lower strings, we would typically use less bow and be a little bit closer to the frog. And on the higher strings, we will typically use a bit more bow and be a little further away from the frog. One way to see this very clearly is to play a couple of notes on the outer strings. So if I play the first five notes of a C major scale on, this, on the C string, you can see that I'm pretty close to the frog, not using much bow. To get that same feeling on the A string, if I do it exactly the same, in other words, close to the frog, not much bow, it sounds really quite clipped and short. If I play it just a little further out with a little bit more bow, I get much more of the same feeling as I had here. A good example of this is in the first movement of the Sasson's cello concerto with the up bow staccato passage which crosses from the lower strings, from the G string specifically, up to high on the A string. So when I start this on the G string, I will be a little bit closer to the frog, using a little bit less bow. In fact, I will be doing a little bit of a retake on each bow, in order that I can stay closer to the frog. And then on the D string, just that one note, and over to the A string, less of a retake. And then here, higher up the fingerboard, more bow still. So in context. 